can make my own filter. Right. Let's see, wait a second. No, I have the filter on. So I'm looking at 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 right. on phone. Yeah. And at, let's see, 0952, um, ZL1RQ is coming in. Now I'm only looking at spots that are made at on the eastern part of the United States where okay. most people yeah. are sleeping yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. So it, you don't really hear that much. But let's see if we can hear ZL1RQ at 14195. He might, he might be off by now. Hmm. And now, so then I want to see what's his, what, what, what's, what's my bearing for him, 251. So I've got to come around and basically, and he's at, he's at, it says here, look, I look, I look on the cluster, I just highlight it. Oh, okay. And it says, look, yeah, yeah, this is yeah. short path yeah. bearing, right. first short right. path. Right. So come around to... Probably, it'd be nice if he came out, came out of the noise, but I don't think he will. I think he's probably off by now. It's been a while. It's been more than a half hour since he was spotted. Hmm. Hmm. And there's not much happening on 20. It's kind of early in the morning. What time does 20 and 40 open up? 40, 20, 20 opens up a little bit later in the morning. Okay. But on a good night, It'll be on all night. Now it's not good right now. You look up here, you can see the solar conditions. Yeah. yeah. The K index is three. It's quite hot. Yeah. It's yeah. almost storm levels. Right. So that might be affecting it right now. That's the bad thing about this. The, the those clicks are from the antenna rotator, is it? Right. Okay. Now it's stopped. Now yeah. it, now oh, it's yeah. now it's aimed right at him. But we're not we're not really hearing anything from him. Sometimes mm -hmm. if I aim to the south. The Latin American stations will come in. Oh. Wait a second, I'm hearing a little bit there. So when you went uh, over, uh, I mean, when you had the contact with India, was that over short path or long path? Usually um, long path is how they're was, doing it. It was, no, it was short path. It was okay. over the North Pole. And when I, I actually got to talk to... Um, to Ron, uh, v, v, uh, WA6 YOU, okay. about his experiences of operating in India. Okay. And I said to him, I said, why, um, when you were in India, I said, did you usually use um, short path or long mm -hmm. path? And he said, normally short path over yeah. the, over the yeah. pole. Yeah. He said, the, the problem with short path was that he would get on and call CQ trying to get to the United States, mm -hmm. and, and all the Russians would be in the middle, <laughs> yeah, and all the Russians would answer. Yeah. He said, but they didn't use long path very much. They wouldn't, you know, if you aimed, aimed south over the South Pole, mm -hmm. um, that would be an effective path, too. It's a very effective path because it's over over the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think this is why we hear, um, let, me, let me get the globe, I'll show you. Um, why we hear um, Australia so well right it's probably over the long path well um, so this part of australia here is pretty much it's close to the antipode here so if we aim mm. the antenna west right it's going like this but most yeah. of the path is over the ocean so we yeah. hear we hear them a lot now, w, now, if you go over over to VK six, mm -hmm. they could go either way, but it really right. it really doesn't matter because they're really <clears throat> kind of at the. By the way, the you know, from Hyderabad, right. go over the pole and you land in New York. Yeah, I know. It is, it, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, but you know what? The other thing you, you discover is that for India and for China, mm. it's it's not that far away. Short path. It's yeah. it's like eight thousand miles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you go down here to, especially like to VK6, mm. there you're getting out to eleven or 12,000 miles. Mm. The other thing that's really interesting that happens, I think, is when you, we go to South Africa. So um, mm. the, there are guys in Cape Town. Now, obviously, there's a short path right. where we aim southeast and he aims northwest. And we go like that, right? Right. But there's a... There's one guy in particular called Wild Bill, CCY. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, was it Zulu Sierra mm -hmm. Six? Is a Charlie Charlie Yankee, and he is a long path guy. So what he will do is he will be aiming to his oh, southeast, wow. 
And for me to get him, I have to aim northwest. Wow. And this is where you really see the difference yeah. in the hex beam. Because if I'm aiming short path at him, I can barely, barely hear him. But if you but turn I, around. If I yeah. turn around. Now, he, he likes that path because he thinks that that path is almost all over the water. Oh. That's right. So yeah, yeah, if yeah. It's, it's hard to get your kind of head around the, uh, <clears throat> around the true. different paths. True, true, true. So uh, it's, you have to start thinking as the true DXer. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I actually use the PSK reporter because that gives you a fairly graphical, you know, idea of what's happening. Yeah, I haven't been using it. I think I think that would that would be a good way to do it. You know, because yeah. you can see who's reporting, and also a lot of these people don't even have to be in a shack. The problem with this right now is that people with with DX uh, DX Watch DX Cluster, mm. if they're not reporting it, um, yeah, they're not. So they actually, what I do is. Uh, I use this or something else? Okay, something else, somewhere else. Okay. <coughs> Again, dot info. Oh. So I can put in my own call sign. This must have been quite a few days ago. Wow. That's over the last so, twelve hours. Uh, no, it, I mean, I, I can set it to, let's yeah. say, one week, right? Wow. No, 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 24, I can't hours. Do that. 24 hours. So there's been not, none of them. Uh, can you set it for a shorter time, set it for like one hour? Yeah, yeah. Like so I, I, I usually put it for about 15 minutes, right? Yeah. So I can actually see my own log, and I know whether I'm getting out at all, and people are not responding to me as opposed to, you know, right, 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 not right. getting out at all. I see. Well, it, it's still showing a lot for 15 yeah. minutes. Wow, a lot. Yeah, yeah. But then if we if we kind of zero it in here. And you can, you know, you can change well, the yeah. modes. You can All change. Modes. Yeah. Do with, 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 with PSK Reporter. What, what should we put? Like, Let's uh, say CW. CW calls. Wow, I'll do CW. Using the call sign. Okay. Here we go. Ah, you see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. Almost everybody is doing, you know, F FT8 these days. No, let's try FT8. Yeah, it'll just light up. Uh, and, you know, it's also that people are not reporting FT8. Yeah, right, right, they're not. I mean, uh, they aren't reporting CW on this. Mm -hmm. The, I mean, most of the C CW reports come from, uh, you know, the CW skimmer. Yeah, yeah. Well, I use the CW skimmer. I you use did? Um, reverse beacon network. Right. Yeah. And I'll use that a lot when I'm testing out a new rig okay. or, or a new antenna. Okay. I'll go on and I'll just call CQ. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. So, let me, let me go here. Watch. All right, but most of the time I just have to put RBN. It, yeah. It, it knows. <laughs> you get this crazy oh, RBN signal. energy, then reverse <laughs> beacon network. Okay, let's see. Go to the main page, and let's see. Spot of the call sign into CQR. Uh, no, no, no not, one has spotted. Oh, okay. yeah, because the, the, the maximum image is five hours. Yeah. Let's see. Let's say um, fifty-nine uh, days. Yeah. Uh, probably. I probably haven't been on it 59 days. Let's see. Let me say months, 12 months. I don't want to do 59 months, 12 months. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, you have to go. Let's see. Let's see. 12 months. Call so out of Philip call. Call so out of Philip. Hmm. It's not showing anything. Really should wait. CW. Oh, I know it's only showing only on ten meters and forty meters. Well, I was on forty. That was when I made a call. So you you use your doublet on the on forty, is it? Yeah, I have two antennas. I, I control the antennas from here, so oh, the, okay. the doublet is in this position. Right, right. I have a forty meter low to the ground forty meter dipole yeah. in the back, okay. and then I have the hex here. Okay. So this controls what antenna I'm using, right. and then this switch controls where the antenna is going. Oh, okay. And I can I could send it up to 
this amplifier, oh, okay, which in okay. this position, okay. or I could send it over to the bench. Oh, okay. listen over to the bench. Yeah, yeah. But um, and then I can go there. Well, I don't know why this is not? It says no sponsor filters are spotted. Okay, spotter. Do you, uh, I have the spotter. While standing, I'm, I'm or a, um, is the bench meant for you to sit and work? I can sit and I can sit and work. I, I actually had a, some spans out here. Okay. But I took them out. Because it's a little too high for. I mean, I my my bench is about this high. Yeah. Well, this so is, that I can, you know, work that uh, way. Elisa got me this bench for Father's Day many, many years ago. Oh, okay. and, and it's been with us in many different places. You can see that I put the numbers on it. Oh. Like, because when I had to disassemble it. Oh, you know. If, if, and yeah, I knew I would yeah, have to yeah, reassemble yeah. it. So before I did it, I, I know, put the numbers like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, carpenters who are mostly illiterate in India, they put these lines. So there'll be three lines going across or two lines going across. Uh, so yeah, that's the same, same idea. Yeah. So you have to put <laughs> yeah. it back together. But this bench has been with us. Ah, right, there, there's a spot. See, see, I put the, put my down. It's all down. Oh, it's coming up. Yeah. So you can see this is all 40 meters, mm. and, and these who I was spotted by. Yeah. And just look, <laughs> lots, and you can see the when this is when I got on the air with the um, the little 100 milliwatt transmitter. Oh, okay. With the the uh, receiver from the DC receiver project. Oh, okay. So I got on. That was a really a good stroke of luck because uh, I had I had built this little little tr transmitter. Mm. It's called a ten minute transmitter. It's okay. even simpler than the Michigan Mighty Mike. Okay. And I built it for the purpose of just testing with the students to show the students that it would, that would could, work. Yeah, yeah. And then I built it and I looked at it and I said, "Wait a minute, <laughs> I could put this on the air." <laughs> now I know that. The purists will will complain about the low pass filters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, I know. So, but I anticipated that. You see, because the the, uh, the dipole antenna, the low to the ground mm -hmm. dipole, has uh, a tuning has a tuner in the, in the okay. line. So there's okay. There's your low pass filter right yeah, there. Yeah. Okay, good. So I got on the air, and with the little receiver, this version of this thing, mm -hmm. I just called CQ a couple of times. An unbelievable guy came back. Oh wow! In um, in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it's a guy that I know. Okay. He's a home brewer, and oh, he was really? on home brew equipment. Wow! And, I mean, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote that up, but he's probably in here. He's probably. There's now a a home brewer CW net on uh, seven zero two zero India time about seven o'clock in the morning. You should try tuning that in if you're in the shack. I will. I will give it a try. Well, you know um, the. Um, Walter KA four KXX and I have his, yeah, his, yeah, his QSL yeah, yeah. over there. He has offered kind of a, a bounty, a okay, prize. Okay. He has offered to pay five hundred dollars US hmm. to any of our students who who are able to check in to this forty meter CW net wow. that they operate every morning. Oh, really? It's called the Sunrise Net. Sunrise Net. Okay. And I I announced this when we were talking to the students, mm -hmm. and their eyes lit up. Oh, really? Can you imagine when you yeah. were when you were you know, yeah, five hundred dollars? Yeah, I mean price. you could probably buy a car. I know. You know? So, <laughs> so I think the, the the school's not crazy about the idea because they don't like me offering these kind of prizes. But I said, well, look, <laughs> the school is not offering the prize. Walter yeah. is. Yeah. Anyway, look, <laughs> one thing interesting about this is that you could click on. Let me see. So I'm seeing if I could spot the guy that we talked to. The the the, the home brewer. Let me mm -hmm. see. Yeah. Because sometimes you can, I think he was over in this no, area. I think I should integrate this entire thing onto SBTX. I already have a couple of interesting features. I mean, I've got Telnet, so. Yeah, but this is this is yeah. a good one, but it's not yeah. it's not really clicking for me right now. I'm not, when I when I like when you, some of them you go up the the, uh, well, yeah, you actually have to run it. But I think he was he was here in in this area, of North Carolina. But it's not showing up there. Mm. I think it's will be a four hour now. 140. But I have them on the. Uh, on this, the you know, the, the CW skimmer is really an amazing piece of software. And what it does is it also cheats. For example, it has a database of probable call signs, okay, that it tries matching up what it's decoding, and that's how it gets the call oh, signs. Really? Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know. Well, when I, I remember when I first started using it, you had to get your speed just about right. Yeah, yeah. But then it got easier. It was probably because they were learning. Yeah. yeah. Like so <laughs> actually, there's a it's it's I think called call three dot text or something. They have a file of frequent contesters all there. Really. Yeah. <laughs>
but there's this guy called AG1 LE okay oh. and he has been trying to use AI to do CW apparently it's one of the toughest AI problems by the way really yeah <laughs> so he's for years he's been you know and he's very good at AI alpha golf 1 lima echo i should actually write them one of these days well you know um with CW mm. some of the guys in the in the club mm. like my friend Dean right. KK4 DAS they they don't have CW and they kind of feel bad about it they say okay. oh i'm going to i'm going to spend the time to learn CW and i tell them no no don't. that's no point don't. i said life no, no life is too short yeah. Yeah. i said it's 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 an, it, why would you try why would you spend time to master something yeah. that's literally 19th century yeah and not only that even in the 19th mm -hmm. century it was never intended to be memorized. Yeah, it's, it was supposed it, to be. It was, yeah. was going to have a, yeah. a paper tape with a yeah. little dots yeah. and dashes, yeah. and then yeah. you would decode yeah. it. And it, it only happened because the, the operators gradually began yeah. to learn, so it helped yeah. them with yeah. the decoding. Yeah. 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 But to think that we're going to spend time to do that now, I told Dean, I said, Dean, <laughs> life is too short. <laughs> but you know, the, the, the interesting thing is this. Now, the Morse code you know, communications which came to the telegraph offices were legal communications. That right. is, no, you know, someone could send a notice to them. So the operators were dissuaded from copying by ear. Ah, because they wanted to, because they had Because that. you need to write it down and you should not guess. You write down what right. the guy. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. and this is why there was the shift to RTTY, yeah. Yeah. especially in the military area. The guy could write down anything. I could write down anything and they could change the course yeah. of a conflict or something, so they, they yeah. went to RTTY. But, you know, I mean, at the club, I actually hold these sessions of telling people how they can do CW in 15 minutes. So, you know, you don't want CW for anything else but to make contacts, right? right. Okay. So the idea is just to get the other guy's call sign in. That's all you need, <laughs> right? You can fake your way through rest of the QSO. So to do that, you do this, that you write down the dots and dashes as yeah. they're coming, and the guy will repeat it a couple of times, right? Yeah. Once you get that down, then you just do not pay attention to anything that the guy is saying, <laughs> right? <laughs> After well, that, so <laughs> you hardly need CW skills. Well, to do CW. <laughs> well this, this came up when, when I announced that the yeah. Walt, Walter's yeah. bount, bounty of $500, okay. <laughs> the student's eyes lit up. Yeah. But then Dean and I had talked about it, and we said, well, we're not going to require these 16-year-old kids who are, to, to, to learn CW yeah. because they're, they, you know, they're, after they finish with our project, yeah. it's going to be on to you know, yeah. CPU chips yeah. and, and yeah. uh, hardware, the software design and all yeah. this other stuff. And so we said, yeah, but, but what they could do is they could just pull up on two, two bits of software, decoder yeah. software yeah. and encoder software, right. and then using those use those to check into the net. Right. In other words, have the, and I've tried to do it here, I've fooled around a little bit, you should put the microphone close to the audio output, mm -hmm. and it's picking up the CW, and then it'll, it'll display yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. That'll happen on FL Digi, will do yeah, that. FL Digi. That's why they were loaded on this bit. Yeah, there you go, there you go. <laughs> so FL Digi will do this, so they'll yeah. take care of the receive, and then on the transmit, you could also have an encoder, you could just hit the right. keyboard, and it'll create the CW. Yeah, yeah. So I actually asked Walter, I said, Walter, look, mm -hmm. I said, um, would you accept machine assistance yeah and he very graciously said bill i'll leave it to you okay. however so i told the kids about this and they were like oh yeah, i can do that so you know actually uh, they, they could do these arduino projects which are these decoders they yeah. work pretty well yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i'm sure I mean, this, if they, for the 500 bucks they might we yeah. might, we might yeah. get them to do that now walter has said that he's had this kind of offer out before okay and he thinks his money is safe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're hoping we're hoping to prove him prove him wrong. <laughs> but uh, um, let me put on the I'm gonna put on the other video, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the projects we have on the okay. bench. But you know, I was I, I, Walter was the one of the ones who complained last time. He said you need to get more video of, of Farhan when he's in the shack. So let me sit, sit down there, stay in the yeah. same spot. I'll okay. just fire up this thing. We'll shoot from the other direction. What's this? The this is a oh, oh these look so this this receiver is something I picked up at, at uh, the latest local ham fest winter oh. fest we looked at it and I, the box looked intriguing and yeah. you, you would you would buy this at a ham fest yeah. box. Box. I know. so I bought it and I said I, I said look I don't know what's in there um, Lee KK4 uh, 
and I tried to get it open, but both of us had forgotten our screwdrivers. So I said, well, sight unseen, I'm gonna buy it. And I thought that it was gonna contain maybe a pixie or, or some other mm -hmm. silly thing. Right. Yeah. And I brought it home and I opened it up and as soon as I looked at the board, mm -hmm. as soon as I looked at the board, Farhan, it has a PC board and it's got an unusual oval shape. Oh, to not in. It, it was Herring 8.5. The, oh, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the receiver, the, yeah, the receiver that I tried to build in yeah, 1976. Yeah, exactly. This guy had wow. succeeded. He had He's built it. it. He had built it. Not only that, I said, I, I could tell from the look at the board mm. that it had gone through some troubleshooting processes. So he okay. he succeeded where I failed. Oh. But then just to test it, after mm. all these years, I took it and powered it up. And it works. Really? It works. It works. So I have it here. And I'll, I'll work on it eventually. But this is a Herring 8.5. This is another version of, this is probably the first version oh, of the, the director PTO, version. Yeah. See where there's the PTO, yeah. diode rain, band test filter. Mm -hmm. And then this is the audio amplifier that we eventually went with. It's quite right. controversial mm -hmm. because it's so simple. It's just three common emitter stages. Okay. That's it. Okay. And there's, a, there's an impedance mis mismatch, but we yeah, yeah, decided yeah. to okay. live with that. Yeah. And it produces audio output. So. This one works, and you can see how I've kind of labeled it because we were going through. Dean and I joked that during the course of this project, each of us built at least three of these receivers. Oh, yeah, yeah. So here's one. Here's another one. Oh man, this is the That's, same. This is yeah. th this is this is a more compact compact right. build, but the same thing. You can this see is with the that there's the PTO. PTO, yeah. Right? There's the band test band filter, filter, diode ring, audio mm -hmm. amplifier. Mm -hmm. This is the one that I actually used to make the contact with the fellow in in North Carolina. And let's see what else we have here. Um, What's that? This thing. Oh, come here. This is just a. Oh. Just a, just uh, it's a cool knob. I had it on one of the receivers. It's an Edison. It's not really Edison, but it's got the oh. same kind of gear. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's got, got a reduction drive. Yeah. It's nice. It's um, nice. And we have all kinds of stuff. This is something that they gave me from the club. Okay. Now look. This is something that looks really beautiful. It's a VFO, right? Oh, a VFO mm -hmm, circuit. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at it, I immediately I said, "Look, it's it's a pretty build. Everything is solid. Yeah. It's very solid in there." You know, but I wouldn't put, yeah. I wouldn't put the active <laughs> elements inside the box. Exactly. You know, <laughs> it's like it's it's going to trap all the heat in there. It's going to heat mm -hmm. up, and eventually the heat's going to yeah, go go into that. I don't. It would be better. I, I don't know. It looks it, like it, a heat filtering actually. It does, does it? Yeah. Wow, I don't know. It looks very kind of... Because I'll tell you why. Heat fit are the only guys who are using RCA jacks ah, for VFOs. Wow. Yeah. It might I mean, you know, that guy had RCA jacks. Yeah. Right, 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 right. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. So did this one? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, that might might be it. Now, look, I've got a couple of other... I, 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 I gave you one of the uh, the VFOs right. from the MT-101. Yeah. But this is another one I picked up. Oh, wow. Now, what was going on with these is that, it's got a yeah, well, but then the, backlash. look at that, the anti backlash. Yeah. So what would happen is Pete would spot these on eBay. Oh. And he would say to me, you got to get one of these. And I would think that I was only going to buy this part. Right. But then whoever chopped it up mm. included the rest of the VFO. Oh, so oh. this is uh, the VFO from a Kenwood TSA-20. Mm. And it runs right. from 5 to 5.5. 5. Oh. 5. It's got two FETs and two transistors. Oh. And it works perfectly. So one of these days I'll build a, yeah. a, 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 a transceiver. You know, this is what happens. You go to a flea market or something and you find something and you say, I'm going to rip this out and take something out of it. But it's so good. It's so good that you have to keep it. Yeah. This is another little transceiver that I built early, very early on. This is, mm -hmm. all right, look, it's got an OLED display yeah. in it. It's a 40 meter transceiver, okay. SSB. I built it on a piece of Whole Foods market okay. thing here but I opened it up and you could see where where it went SI, SI yes SI, it's got an SI 5351 in it it's got a little nano or, okay. or no it's got no, it's, a it's uno, regular, an uno, okay, uno. uno. Yeah. and then it's got there's the crystal filter mm -hmm. right it's got any 602s in it it's got these little um, kind of crosshatch boards that Pete made yeah, for yeah, me yeah. and I, I actually scribed them out now yeah, you do, you do. Yeah. I, cut up. I, I've become a, I've become a Manhattan. I'm still Manhattan. Manhattan. I like yeah. the, the pads and everything else. But um, then I put amplifiers up on the wall. 
and then where's the, where's the thing? Uh, the main amplifier you could see. Right, here, right. 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 The IRF 510, probably yeah. based on one of your circuits. But this thing works fine, and I, I really was just pleased that the little tiny number will yeah. appear, 7150. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> That's right. And then this is the, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the DS, my, one of my original DSB rigs. Let me put it up here so we don't fall. I, I put this shelf up. That's good. Uh, yeah. Here we go. We'll take it up here. Hold on. Well, that's pretty compact. This was my, one of, one of my first <laughs> double side band rigs. It's got the, it's got the, the speakers, <laughs> which, which is what's jamming up. There you go. Look. Okay. So. Earphones, right. The microphone. Look, the microphone on this thing is from the Sony Walkman. Oh, that one. Yeah, Sony yeah, Walkman yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. We both there was a special blue. version which could record. That's and right. That's right. Studio. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. But, but I would use that for the mic. Oh wow. This thing has been on. Look, built in the Azores in 2001 by CU2JL. Oh. I used it in France. I used it in the UK. Used it in Italy for local QSO. So. When I was in Italy, the whole time I was using this for local QSOs with the other hams. Used several times in the Dominican Republic, including December 2014 on the Samana Peninsula. Oh. So it, it has been at different times. It has mm -hmm. been on 17 meters and 20 meters. Okay. I think it's on 20 right now. Because what I've done is I've got ceramic resonator VFO. Okay. So when, the, when this switches down in this position, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It tunes 14282 to 14322. Oh, and when it switches that's... in that position, it goes 14266 to 14304. Oh. So in effect, I get yeah. to go from 14266 to 14322. All right. Here's okay. the tuning. Look, and right. you can see this shows you where you are yeah. between these. You <laughs> between... <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. And and it puts out <coughs> about two watts. Okay. And I used to run it off of this oh, so yeah. I wouldn't even have to have the batteries Nothing. when I traveled yeah, yeah. as soon you as I got just, to the place yeah, I put double A batteries yeah, and yeah, run it yeah. and I made I made contacts mm -hmm. all over the world with this thing and it's one of my, it's it's like one of my original um, double sideband yeah. rigs so look some of the other stuff look there's a QF1 now I bought this at the Winterfest Hamfest okay let me make sure. Let me make sure we're on our camera here. We're talking about all the good stuff. I want to make sure we're, we're. I've got this thing aimed properly. Yeah, we are. But I'm going to aim the camera up a little bit more here. This is people will want to see us talking about this stuff. So, um, ah, this is just a. This is a dongle. I have a dongle in here. Okay. Let me see if I'm. No. Oh, okay. So this basically powers it up. This, this powers so the dongle. The USB, okay. the USB powers it, but yeah. the battery powers a little uh, preamp, preamp. Okay. That, I, that I built, and so it's a 40 meter thing. So you, you just plug it in like this. I might have modified this when I was listening to your cube set. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I have one. And then this, this goes antenna, and then it just goes boop. Oh. And that's okay. it. So it's a dongle. Um, what we were, oh, we were talking about the QF1. Yeah. So I, I got, um, I bought this at the latest ham fest because I have been butchering QF1s for a number of years. <laughs> okay. And I feel bad about it, yeah. right? So, because the thing is, there's a beautiful variable capacitor in there. That's on the... That's the one there, yeah. and it's got a reduction drive. Yeah. Pete Kit put this knob, it's got two indicators. See that thing there? Oh. And then yeah. it's got that. Yeah. This is yeah. for no purpose at all. Right? Okay. Because this thing shows you where the tuning is. Yeah. So it's a 455 KCQ multiplier. It's got a beautiful cap in there. I would get these things and just rip the cap out. Okay. Then I would use the box for another project, like here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's the same. Yeah, that's a box. That's okay. the box. It's got it's got two frequency counters in there. One reads the frequency off the transmitter. Mm -hmm. The other reads the frequency off the receiver. Okay. So I could see where I yeah. am on, yeah. on on AM. But anyway, I, I spotted, I've done that so many times, and I've got a number of the capacitors. I don't need any more capacitors, I don't think. <laughs> but I spotted this at the last Winterfest, mm. and, and I said to myself, should I buy this or not? I don't know. <laughs> and I said, well, I justified it. I said, if I don't buy it, right. Dean will come through here <laughs> in an hour, and, <laughs> and Dean will buy it, buy it and Dean yeah. will chop it up. So yeah, it's like, no, 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 way, so, no so I've got to get it. Yeah. Here, the HW, famous HW7. Somebody gave yeah. me. Somebody gave me this. 
and um, I have the HW8 also. But look at this here. This is this is magnificent. This stuff. This is another example of where I bought. I was buying it just for the reduction drive, mm. and the guy sent me the whole thing. And I wow. think this one is out of. I think this is out of the HT37. So this is the entire VFO assembly. Okay. Now look what I've done. So you put an FET there. I put an FET yeah, yeah. Okay. instead of the tube. Solid state is it? And I fire. I fire it up with <laughs> this thing, and it, it's very stable. It's 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 great. Now this one is look at look at the mechanism, the flywheel mechanism, yeah. and everything else. Beautiful. Look at the tuning. The tuning is, is just you beautiful. Know, whenever you. It's it's like whenever you see a dog you pet, whenever you see a radio you always tune. It's <laughs> and it's 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 the same one out of the HD thirty seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first. Well, thing I know. <laughs> I, I didn't want the tube, so I wanted I wanted to try to F, put an FET in there, okay. and you can see I just I just put it and right. then I just plugged it right in yeah, there. Yeah. That's it. So so one of these days. I bought a, a Drake TR four C, which I want a solid state like that. Actually, you know, I bought it. At Dayton, for the same reason, I wanted the PTO out. Uh -huh. So, you know, I brought it back to the hotel and I told Arun, uh, W8 ARU, you know, let's get the screwdriver and the, you know, the cutters out and I'll yank this out. I can't carry this entire thing to Hyderabad. <laughs> but, you know, I, I mean, how can you leave a Drake out? So, you can't. And yeah. that's, you know, probably, yeah, that, that's the second radio I've ever bought in my life. Oh, you're 